hey, thank you for doing this. We really appreciate it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, uh, we, uh, we're in Connecticut. We're in Southern Connecticut. We're about an hour and a half from uh, New York City. Cool. So years ago, I was reading an article and a critic once said that uh, the Killers will eventually release the greatest hits album and it'll be called Hot Fuss, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> which I thought was a great line. Um, do you consider that a perfect, do you consider that a perfect album or is there things you would fix on it? No, I mean, there's, there's great stuff that we're really proud of on it. I don't know if it's perfect. It's a hell of a debut, you know, looking back on it now. Um, <laughs> And we're, you know, it was a, you know, great way to, to start a career. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, no, definitely. We're all really proud of it. And, you know, over the years, you know, you've sort of worn your inspirations on your sleeve, you know, whether it be covering Dire Straits or Tom Petty um, mm -hmm. or Joy Division. And you even contributed to the U2 tribute album for Actune. Uh, yeah. So I really think Sam's Town has a Joshua Tree type feel to it. Um, as a U2 fan, was U2 someone that inspired you growing up as well? Yeah, um, they weren't always on, you know, it was, it started off with me with a more on the new wave yeah. side of things. And it's a strange story, but I was at a um, scout gathering for mm -hmm. the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And I was about 15 and they were having all these speakers and they actually had a, a you know, a stage and, 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 and a sound system and we we're all camping. And then, and then that night was going to be this, this sort of, you know, gathering. And during the day they were checking the sound system and they played with, with or without you. And, oh, wow. um, oh. And I had I had heard it, you know, before. It's just such a. It's just one of those songs that, that's just around, and yeah. but but yeah. I heard it. <laughs> I heard it yeah. differently yeah, really, that so day, and my, you. yeah, it's like I felt it, and and um, I still remember standing out there in the dirt and and having that you know that inspirational moment, and no, and then and then I came around to you two later and. There's some, you know, a band that we admire now a lot, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a, sp a specific U2 song that really you connect with? And I, it, it sounds like it would be that one, with or without you. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the, the go-to for, uh, for a lot of people. But, of course, there's, uh, you know, so many great songs. Um, they're, yeah. you know, they're, uh, they're just one of the special bands. And you had a great line. You were on a podcast. I don't know if you remember, but you were talking about the book "Meet Me in the Bathroom." Um, about and you, you said that the book should have just been called "The Strokes Are Great." <laughs> and, and, and that, line, that? <laughs> yeah, that line, that line just stuck with me because I was like, "It's true." Like that whole book, it, it's so funny that it, it was just a great line. Um, but I wanted <laughs> to know back back then, were you aware of the Strokes, and were you aware of? you know, that they were sort of jealous of your band's success. And how did you feel about them back then in the early 2000s? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we were just getting together when the Strokes and the White Stripes were making a splash. And so we, I remember just being extremely jealous. Um, I had just started playing with Dave and, and I was, I was at a, I'll try to keep this short but there used to be a Virgin mega store in Caesar's palace. Yeah. And I, would, I worked in there and I would take, you know, at my tips or whatever. And I, I, if I, I could buy, a, if I had enough money to buy a single, I bought a single. If I had enough money to buy a couple magazines, I bought magazines, but I would go through, I was in Q magazine and, the, and there was an import section in it. And it was talking about this band, the strokes and it had this picture of them. And, um, you know, and Julian just, just looked beautiful and yeah and they were they just looked so cool <laughs> and i went down into the import section and you know it, it talked about their influences and this was the same music i was listening to and it was like what is happening yeah and i went and, and i bought the import and it was the, the you know it was um like an ep that they released before is this it and it was better than the the write-up about them you know it was sh shockingly good and I just, it, I just made me depressed and jealous for a long time. 
yeah, so yeah I was a you know. you're you're right though they they were they just epitomized cool and is this it I mean there's nothing there's no record to me that sounds more like gritty NYC you know in the early 2000s than that record it's it's unbelievable yeah it was a real moment and and it you know they just blew the doors open for 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 bands like us yeah um so so you're in Utah right you're living in Utah yeah is Ronnie, does Ronnie live down the street from you? Or I know on your Instagram lives, you're always together. Do you, does he just come over and you write music all the time? Or have you been quarantined together? <laughs> yeah, we, we, you know, we're keeping tabs on what everybody's, uh, you know, what we're doing, making sure we're not breaking the rules. But yeah, he lives a, okay. about three, I say three, four miles away from me. Oh, okay. It, this, this might sound funny, but uh, for years you released original Christmas songs. And, uh, and you didn't do one this past year, but is that something that you, that you would do again in the future? Release another original Christmas song? Or? We did it every year for, for the Red Campaign. And oh, that's it, what it, know, okay. Yeah, so we were able to raise, I think we raised over a million dollars with these Christmas songs for the Red Amazing. Campaign, helping people in Africa um, get access to, you know, to medication and, and pills for AIDS and, and all kinds yeah. of stuff that, you know, that Bono and Bobby Shriver um started that for and it was just great to 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 be able to be a part of it and chip in and we wrote you know a couple of kind of a couple of great christmas songs i mean a but great yeah, big sled a great big sled is one of my favorite christmas songs even more than yeah. some of the originals <laughs> yeah and so so it was like it was fun and it was fun while it lasted and we're, we're yeah. you know whenever anybody downloads those songs or pays for those songs that money's still going to help people and, yeah. and so we're really proud of it. And, and it, but yeah, I think we're going to stop on the Christmas. Yeah. Definitely stop for the Christmas song. <laughs> More importantly, is there any Christmas songs that you think are the worst Christmas songs that you can't stand? <laughs> for, when I was a kid, I loved um, "Grandma Got Run Over by Ra- by a Reindeer." I hate it. Now. Oh, that, it <laughs> that's so funny because I sort of feel the same way. You know, when you're a kid, it's a funny song, but then it's yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it gets annoying. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so your band, you know, you have some great anthems, especially live. Uh, you know, obviously, Mr. Brightside, the crowd is always into it. But is there any other killer songs that you, when you go to play them before you even start playing them that you know it's just going to crush them live immediately? We're lucky, you know, we've been lucky to have have a few of those um, that are just every night are, um, you know, you know, yeah, like you said, I guess you just kind of know that yeah. there's going to be an impact and it's that it's going to elevate the show. Or uh, Human does that when you were young and uh, read my mind and Runaways and so yeah, there's a f- there's a few. And you must be itching to play the new songs live, you know, because you you have all you have caution, you have all the songs ready to go. Um, you must want to play them in front of a crowd. Yes, I'd like to not just play caution in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of phones. <laughs> um, but that goes to show, you know, over the past few weeks, you, you and Ronnie have really embraced Instagram Live and, you know, a lot of the digital type stuff. So is there, you know, how, how has that been connecting to new Killers fans who might be on these different platforms, whether it be Instagram or is there possibly a Killers TikTok account in the future? In the future? Uh, no. I mean, they might be confused. They might think, they might think Ronnie's our guitar player. Um, <laughs> right. Too new. right. He's actually a fantastic drummer um, yeah i know they think you're a duo <laughs> so but yeah we've been making the most of it and having, getting creative um yeah. and connecting yeah. in in our own special way yeah and uh yeah i gotta say before i let you go i gotta thank you for something the, the one of the first instagram lives you did a couple weeks ago where you were in the studio playing the new songs um you had a coat on a patagonia coat and I was like, this yeah. coat, it looks so cool. That's such a cool coat. So I went to their website and, and I bought a coat from them because of how cool it looked. And now you've upped my fashion game. It's now the coolest right. coat I own. It's now that the you, coolest yeah, coat I own. You just, I hate saying pop the collar, but those collars are just right. They don't come up too high and so you can yeah. have them up. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a, yeah, it's a fantastic coat. So thank you for upping my fashion game. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Well, Brandon, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And um, next time you're up near New York or Connecticut, hopefully we'll be able to see you when it's not through a phone. (laughs) Yes, thank you.